Uh, we'll start with uh, just a brief comment about uh, Louisville, our, our ACC opponent this week. Uh, I've had a chance to you know, meet Coach Petrino over the, the last couple of head coaches' meetings. Um, you know, I, I've, I've known him over the years and his coaching uh, accolades and things that he brings to, to his team. The team is, their team is playing very well. And, uh, you know, we'll, uh, this will be a great challenge for us. We're, we're excited about the challenge. And these guys come into Charlottesville, so uh, I'll take any questions. You guys are second in the country in turnovers forced through two weeks. What I mean, what combination? What is it? What does it say about the players? What does it say about the scheme that you guys have been able to? I mean, in two years, basically alter. Everything, you know, sort of two years ago, that was a missing piece of this defense. And now, two years later, it's your tops in the country two weeks into the season. Uh, it's, it's been a, a mindset, a concentrated mindset on, you know, turnovers and how it changes the game. And obviously, we, we had success last week with, uh, with the seven turnovers. And if you look back, um, which has led to about 31 points, and I don't think we had that all told in the last, uh, last season. So... The, the guys defensively are doing a pretty good job. And again, uh, with Eli and Max Vallis coming off the edge and some other things that are happening that uh, they're, they're causing havoc and the strip sack, you know, cause fumble, um, the interceptions, or all those things that have been geared towards, you know, playing better defense. And the players have bought into that. We got to continue that. We have to continue. It's great that we had it in two games, but we need to do it particularly this game because this team we're playing is a very good team. But um, the mindset defensively has been create the turnovers to give yourself a chance to win. You know, you talked about or, uh, Richmond, you know, that first drive, obviously, on Saturday when they were kind of combating the blitz with certain things and were able to move the ball. Then you guys adjusted and kind of shut them down. W what do you think of, of, of Louisville's offense? Is it, is it similar to what Coach Petrino had with them at the beginning, or is it, is it, is it a whole new, whole new thing now? In the beginning, I mean the last time he coached with them. Is it... What is this offense? How does it compare to the, you know, the offenses you faced already this year? Well, you, you see uh, multiple personnel groups that they have, you know, with whether it's uh, two backs and a tight end, uh, two tight ends. You know, they, they, they can run the ball well. I think they've averaged over 200-something yards rushing. The running back that they have is uh, the, the two of them that they've used in the last couple games here are, are hard, aggressive, physical runners. You do see some elements of the spread passing game as well because they have such skilled guys on the, you know, on the outside. So there's, there's a little bit of, you know, he does a great job of mixing in his personnel groupings with, with the type of plays that, uh, you know, that they run. They will run the ball, and then they will throw the ball deep. I mean, that's the other thing that they do. So they keep you off balance with a personnel group that, uh, that comes in the game. Mike, obviously, Bridgewater was a, was a centerpiece of what they've done it previously. What are your impressions of, of Gardner? I think he's thrown it 50 times this year without a pick, which is ideal in any circumstance. But for a guy starting for the first time, seems pretty impressive on the outside. No, he does. He, he, he's poised back there in the pocket. He, um, you know, he manages the game well, I, I believe, which you can look at the way he's looking to throw the ball and the completions, you know, being efficient. You know, he gets the ball to their playmakers. And, um, you know, we watched the game against Miami and this past game that, you know, that he is, uh, you know, that he can put the money on the, on the spot, the ball on the spot. So it's important that our rush lanes and being able to try to get after him, you know, pressure him a little bit, not give him a whole lot of time, that's going to be critical for us. But uh, he has done, he's done well for his football team. He's led his team by doing the things that they've asked him to do and then hand the ball off or throw the ball to those receivers who are very dynamic. Hey, Mike. Uh, was Louisville as dominating on film as they looked uh, against Miami on TV? And, and what, uh, what stuck, stuck with you out of, that, of watching that game? Well, when you look at them play against Miami, they they excelled in all three phases. You know, offense, defense, and special teams. Their touchdowns on special teams. They uh, they did a great job. You know, again, 
getting after a, a young Miami quarterback, Brad Kaya. Um, you know, and then they just their, their defense is so fast that you know what you think as a whole, because of their their pursuit, they run and they close it up. Um, you know, offensively they, you know, they can attack you vertically. Like I said, they'll line up and they'll run the ball right at you because they got you know a size offensive line. But it's impressive the last two games they've put up points and they've held teams. You know, they've held teams to. You know, to minimal points. Uh, again, this I believe this defense last year was the number one defense in the country in total defense given up, of total yards given up. So, you can see a lot of the carryover. Even though it's a new coach, there's a lot of carryover into to the players that are making it happen. Mike, when you're playing two quarterbacks, do you worry at all about them trying to maybe force an issue on the field just to try to get a result that you know may, maybe makes them shine in a in a brighter light? Um, no, we, when your quarterbacks are in the game, there's a game plan to follow. We want them to be efficient. We want them to be productive and throwing the ball where, we needs, where it needs to go. And if they can do that and, and, and play close to the coaches' scripts that we have for them, then uh, they can be productive. And, you know, past, past week, this past game, they were productive, both of them. You know, and, and that's what we always strive for. So productive, um, being efficient. And being able to carry the game plan message, you know, as they're managing the game out there in the field is, is critically important. Grayson didn't really throw downfield much the first week, but did a lot more yesterday or Saturday. Um, was that because those were the plays that were called or was there some some guidance to him that, you know, you need to look to do that some? You know, there's always options. You know, you, you just don't want one run pass route when you're when you're in your throwing game. There's always options. And. And the quarterback has choices, and let's say he made some um, he made some choices that uh, resulted in some some long catches and long you know catch after run, and we're always going to try to encourage that with Matt, with with Grayson, with David, and that's the structure of the offense. And if they can do that, then we uh, we feel pretty confident that that they make their reads, they make their throws, and they could be successful in doing that. Mike, why do you think these guys, these quarterbacks, are, are better equipped to sort of handle the, just the emotional aspect of being in a two-quarterback system, sort of, you know, not knowing when exactly they're going to play? What, what about these two guys do you think makes them equipped to sort of handle that part of it? Um, probably the main reason is because they're best friends. The other reason is they, they cheer for each other. And perhaps the latter is that um, – they don't care who gets the success as long as the team wins. And um, I see those probably the big three reasons. Hey, Mike, uh, Taquan Mizell, his longest reception this season is eight yards. His longest run is seven. Do you feel like he's just like a one broken tackle away from you know, breaking out? Because you know, he hadn't been as elusive as I think everyone expected and was hoping for. I, I do believe the fact that uh, when we get to that second level we're talking about through through the defensive lineman into the linebacker area that he's and you go back on film he's just he's one wiggle one tackle away from from having an explosive play so he does have that kind of skill and that talent and obviously we need that kind of skill and talent you know versus this defense we're getting ready to play but but the smoke as we call him is is a guy that can uh, can be dynamic. He'll, he'll need to be dynamic for us, and, uh, and we believe that he can, he can do those things that can turn a, a routine run into you know a home run, and so uh, we're looking forward to him being able to do that. Daquan will be be in here later. I think Saturday was the first pick by a Virginia linebacker in four years. Is that what you're? And then you know, double double digit tackles. Is a matter of you know, scheme fitting him, him picking up the scheme, just natural progression of, of age and maturity. What have you seen from him through through two weeks, Mike? I believe all of the above in what you said. You know, him being familiar with the scheme, the scheme, the things that we're asking the guys to do. You know, Day Day has done that in a, in, a, in an area that shows his his experience. He's become a leader. He understands the defense better. He can perform and he can execute those things that you know Coach Tudor has asked out of our linebackers. And him being in the throw, that was that was a it was a good interception that he made. His tackles are uh, 
or, or very aggressive physical tackles that he's making. He's back from the shoulder shoulder injury that he had. So he's played played well. And I just think it's the benefit from being, again, for all these guys being older, the scheme, the systems, being more familiar with a lot of things, and being very comfortable about uh, about what he's doing, what he's asked to do out there. So and it's a positive for him. And, and it's good that he had, a, uh, in essence, probably a, a career game. Follow up on Mark for a minute about the quarterbacks. Um, their skill sets seem pretty similar. Does that make a rotation more uh, manageable than it would be with, with two guys who are who are dramatically different types of players? Um, you know, not necessarily. It's uh, again, it's some of the things that we ask them to do, or and the throws we ask them to make, are just are based on accuracy. And if, if you go back and you look at passing attempts and completions. And then touchdown opportunities. Those are the those are the most the most important things to us, and they are. I would say Matt is probably a little bit more agile than um, than Grayson, um, but at the same time, you know the things that we're asking him to do falls within the package offensively. What we what we're trying to do as well. So the thing about those two guys, they're great learners, and you know again, we will see how much we've learned coming out of this game going into this game against Louisville. Just what was yesterday like? I mean, coming in after a win, finally, did, did you, was there a sense of relief among the players? And now are you ready to kind of cross the next, next one off your list, which is trying to break a, a long ACC losing streak? No, I mean, believe it or not, I mean, yesterday was back at work, back at the, you know, back at the grind. Um, it's, you know, we're happy for the win, like I said, but we're nowhere near satisfied for where we are right now. I mean, we we have a challenging opponent coming in. And as you said, it's an ACC opponent. It's an opportunity for an ACC win. So our the focus has been on climbing the ladder. And you know, we're just another step in the rung right now. And that's that's what we're that's what we're focused on. When you think back to last winter, did you anticipate this kind of start to a season for Severin? You know, Cannon was a young man who was trying to find himself as a football player, as a student here, you know, just uh, being a, a great teammate. He, he has a great life story. If you have a chance sometime, you ought to talk to him about it, where he's been and what he's, what he's gone through. But he decided consciously to lose about 20 pounds, and he did that over the course of the – after spring into the summer because he wanted to be able to run faster. He wanted to be able to increase his endurance. He caught footballs almost every day. And so when you see Kanan now, you know, you, you, see a, you see a guy that wants to improve. And I've always said that the biggest improvements of players are sometimes after that spring practice, that those summer months when no one's really there watching you as much. And if you had to say a guy that made the most improvement on the team and changing his body, changing his – his 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 diet, the way he eats, he probably would be that guy, and and it, and it's shown in his performance. So uh, he's, um, like I said, he's he's done nice things, and and I know he he wants to continue to keep being a guy we can throw to and rely on. Mike, you noted after the game the other day that the uh, average rush per carry uh, had increased from the opening game. Where would you say your running game is right now? Is it where you expected it to be? And, and what's it going to take to take it up a, another notch? No, well, you'd always like to, as I said, you'd like to be able to run the ball more. You'd like to run the ball more efficiently. You'd like to be able to run the ball with a guy like Kevin Parks, who we haven't forgotten that he's ACC's leading returner in rushing yardage. So um, those are the things that that we know we have to understand. we got a guy that's a pretty good player. At a, at a running back position. And so whatever we need to do to to create that running game, again, that will open up the passing game for us is something that's critical. But we, we definitely, Jerry, are, are cognizant of the fact that, that you have to be able to run the ball effectively and efficiently because that will lead to a lot of other things. And when you have a guy like Kevin, you know, it's important that we, we try to utilize his skill set. Obviously, the first week, the play that stuck out with Quinn was the touchdown run. This next week, the play that stuck out was, you know, the interception, the tackle. But how on film 
has he graded out? How 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 well has he adjusted to the college game these first two games when you guys go back and watch, you know, everything in total? Yeah, you know, he, he's still a, he's a work in progress. I mean, it's his second college football game. You know, he again his benefit is having a guy like Anthony Harris back there with him. You know, he there's room for improvement with him, um, but he's a very physical player who come up and he'll hit you, he'll tackle you, and the more he plays, the more he practices, then the better he'll get. You know, so. His learning curve is is always being extended. His ability to uh, to show what he has, as we saw, you know, on Saturday, go up at the highest point, get the interception, make some t tackles, uh, make some physical tackles, is something that he he continues to do. So we're happy about his development. But again, you know, with the guys we got coming in this week, we'll see. Well, this whole team will see the test of where we are. We played UCLA, very tight, very close. We played a, a very, um, very good, um, you know, University of Richmond team, and now we'll see. I don't know what Louisville will be ranked, but we'll see where we are in terms of, uh, you know, being able to look at ourselves and engage how much we've improved or what how much further we need to go. Mike, are you content to continue to play two quarterbacks for the foreseeable future, or would you like one to kind of emerge? I'm content with anybody that can help us win or whoever is whoever's the guy that's back there making it happen for us. And if it's playing one, it's one. If it's playing two, then it's playing two. So I, there's, no, there's, there's no timetable or no secret formula or magic potion to, to say we're going to have this guy. Right now, it's been productive for us, and, and we'll continue to do that until it proves otherwise. Last week you were talking about when guys made mistakes and they got pulled out of the game. Um, you know, a hold or a lining up in the wrong formation. How many instances like that did you have on Saturday? Um, there were a few. And, you know, addressed in the sideline area. One of the great things that allowed us to do last week is we, we played close over 55 players. And so that's a lot, of, a lot of players having an opportunity to play. We talked about playable depth. And a lot of times you get your opportunities to play, you know, in a game that kind of got away from Richmond. But, um, you know, again, we'll continue to hold the players accountable to the standards of executing the way we need to, we need to, them to execute in order to be successful. This is uh, the start of what will be an annual series between these two teams. Uh, I know it's just a sign of the times with expansion everywhere, but is it weird not to have Maryland on the schedule this year for the first time in however long and be getting ready for a new ACC game? Well, yeah, we all know that the – this, the whole Big Five, the whole conference alignment, realignment, expansion—you know, whatever you want to call it—that you know, there's some there's some natural rivalry games that are are done, you know, and so it's everybody having to get used to the fact that a team that you used to play before you may never play again unless perhaps you may meet them in a a bowl game opportunity. But you know, Maryland's a, obviously is a border state, and you know, there's been a, a recruiting. You know, uh, we go against them a lot in recruiting. Let's just put it that way. And, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, so, you know, it's it, their focus is on their team and their conference and their direction and ours is is on our team and our conference and direction. So um, I'll just leave it at that. The numbers about your, your defense that pop off the page are the sacks and, and the takeaways. But you're just your playing run defense numerically, statistically, has been quite good. You mentioned Louisville's ability to to, to, to run the ball. How do you think you, you match up there, and how pleased have you been with just your straight run defense? Yeah, that's a you know it's it's one of those things that if you can again stop the run, you know it's no secret we're a pressure defense, and so you you apply pressure to the passing game and rush the passer, want to hit the passer disrupt throwing lanes. But it is uh, it is a fact that they like to run the ball as well. And they, they're very physical. When you watch them play, they're very physical up front. And they got a physical, uh, two physical tailbacks that run the ball. So, you know, our work will be cut out for us because we'll see, you know, what that plan is as Saturday starts to unfold. But, I, again, I go back to our you know, know our guys knowing the run fits, you know, and the gaps that's that's helped us 
you know, much more than, than in the past. And we're going to have to have that, those type of efforts again this week. I think uh, in the preseason, Mike Archer called Maurice Canada your best shutdown corner. How often has he been thrown at in the first two games? And how has he graded out? And Bless you. because of the way he takes away one side of the field, how much is that giving more opportunities to a guy like Tim Harris, who obviously had a, had a pick on Saturday? You know, Maurice is very confident. And to be a corner, you know, out there, you have to be very confident. And he probably is our best cover guy, you know, that's healthy right now. He, he'll go take anybody into the boundary, into the field, wherever. And it, there's an amazing amount of confidence that he has. And having a guy like him that can take a guy, their best receiver, is, uh, is a challenge. But it's also a challenge that he embraces. And, and he's, thus far, he's, you know, he's, he's done, done well. One last question on the, on the QBs. I know you're probably sick of answering it, but. As long as I keep giving the same answers, I'm good. You can keep asking all you want. <laughs> Will it be a predetermined rotation Saturday, or will it be more riding the hot hand? Well, we'll, we'll decide that as we go into tomorrow's practice. Tomorrow's a Tuesday practice, our first practice. And as we put the game plan together, so. As we move forward in that, then we'll decide kind of the game plan of how we're going to do and what we're going to do with these with both quarterbacks. But right now, it's it's about Louisville right now and, and game planning and, and finding out what plays, what personnel groupings, what guy can offer us the best opportunity to be successful against them. You guys have thrown quite a bit to the tight end in the past, but that hasn't really been part of what you've been doing this year. Is that a protection issue, more max protect kind of stuff, or um, just something different? I, I just say probably the the teams we played right now have not, you know, given a whole lot of opportunity to to isolate and throw to to Zach Swanson or uh, Rob Burns. Um, and I would say that before the season is over and in whatever game we're playing, there'll be times that that through matchup or through game planning that. We'll try to utilize the tight end in the passing game. But thus far, they've been in protection, and they have uh, been in the run blocking positions. But um, I would say that you know that we would uh, there are plans, there will be plans to to help utilize their skill set as well. Do you pay any attention to uh, attendance? Is it part of your job, or do you just feel if you play well, it'll take care of itself? No, I, pr I appreciate the people that show up and come out and support the players and supports the team. And um, obviously, being successful on the field leads to a lot of people wanting to know what's going on. And so that's the focus. Coach the team, play the games, and uh, let everything else take care of itself. For each of these two games, I think UVA has issued a heat alert for fans. Have you guys been affected by the heat? cramps or, or anything and how, how have you seen your team's conditioning in you know in, in, in hot conditions no that's that's been uh, kind of a significant theme throughout the early part of August and in these last two games you know I, I believe if you remember we talked up about earlier the way we've changed our practices how we practice there's been things from a nutritional standpoint through a new coverage a recovery standpoint hydration, sleep. I mean, there's so many different elements that are included now into the way we train and perform that, um, you know, UCLA was, it was, it was hot. We did have, we had some guys cramping, but, um, you know, it wasn't as bad as what they were experiencing. And then this game, I don't recall anybody cramping or having any issues. So, you know, it, it has to be a buy-in approach with the players. You can have all this technology and science about what you do, heart monitors, monitors, and, and different things. If the players don't buy into going to, going to bed when they're supposed to, eating nutritional foods, um, hydrating their body, then it doesn't matter. You know, I, I know for a fact our soccer team, our men's basketball team, they they are involved heavily involved in the recovery aspects, uh, and and I'm a believer in that as well. And so we we also are heading down that road or it, or down that path of. Of, of taking care of the things that can help you be successful. And we're not talking about block, blocking and tackling. You know, we're talking about what you put in your body, how you sleep, 
you know, different things like that. And, and the science has been quite remarkable with that, being able to last and sometimes outlast an opponent. Do you want to mention where you guys went this summer to get some of that information? Well, well I mean, I, I, I've known Chip Kelly for a while. He was at New Hampshire. And I was at uh, Richmond as a coach. And um, we had a chance to go visit and talk to them. And, and, again, there's some neat things about what's going on out there nationally, but particularly not only with the NFL, but there's other college teams as well that are that are really focused on on, this, on the players' nutrition and recovery. And it's been um, – it's been something that's been different for us in practicing. And I, I've seen it uh, in the games. I've seen it you know, in their legs. And, and, it's, and we'll continue to keep doing it. Coach, do you, do you believe what you're doing offensively puts enough pressure on, on other defenses? And a kind of attached question to that, are, are you concerned with predictability of the types of things you guys are trying to do? You, know, you always want to be productive on offense, defense, or special teams, you'll always want to put a plan together that you can minimize their best players, maximize your best players. And that's always something that we'll, I'll continue to demand from all the coordinators. Uh, can we play better offensively? Sure, absolutely. Um, can we play better defensively? We can. Um, so the, the team continues to forge that kind of identity as far as who we are and what we are you know, on all three facets. And outside of defensively any injuries, th that, you know, that uh, who we are has been is being determined. Special teams I is getting there. And offensively, getting a few people back hopefully will also allow us to, you know, forge an identity to be even stronger as far as what we do, you know, on that side of the ball. Coach, you were talking about Reese earlier. I'm just interested in um, what you've seen on film from your cornerbacks, especially with the ball in the air. I know there were a couple of long plays uh, on Saturday. Um, how, have you, how, would you, how have they graded out in terms of their play with the ball in the air? Um, there's, there's so many elements to corner play. I, I was a long time ago, I was a corner at the University of Richmond myself, so I'm just speaking from experience a little bit. Um, you know, you got to be able to play run. you gotta, you know, you got to be able to replace a crack block by a wide receiver. And obviously, you got to defend the pass, whether it's zone or man coverage. Um, you could look at it. Probably were a couple balls that were thrown in the air that uh, you know you'd want to play that ball better, get your hands on it. But you also looked at a couple plays, passes broken up, uh, passes defended, tight coverage that resulted in positive uh, results as well. So we'll continue to keep teaching, coaching the DBs to go up at its highest point and try to get that ball down. And making sure the receiver doesn't get it. So, you know where we are with interceptions right now, and you know what we're doing to put pressure on the quarterback. We want to keep improving those numbers and those opportunities. Coach, there's been some attrition on the offensive line in the off, off season, and now you face a D line in Louisville that uh, I think a lot of people respect. What have you seen as an old D line guy from them that you think is impressive on Louisville's front? You know, they they play really fast. I mean, they. And they know how to get off of blocks well. And when you look at their, their entire defense, the front seven, when you have linemen that can handle their gaps, and there may be a hole there momentarily, but because they can run, they close that hole up pretty good. And that's, that's athleticism and team overall speed. So um, you know, their, their defensive line is, is uh, you know, they give you a multiple look, but they are very stout, very aggressive. And um, you know we'll have to make sure that we put a game plan together to try to, you know, neutralize some of that or, or try to accentuate the positives that we have for our, you know in our camp, and that will be the challenge this Saturday. Mike, this is a bit of a random question, but back to the new nutrition thing. That the new NCAA rule about unlimited food and snacks. How has that played out? Has that changed anything for you guys at your training table or like offensive linemen feasting these days? Like. I, yeah, but I'm just curious, did you change anything because of that new rule? Well, I mean, obviously the new rule allows for student athletes and not just uh, football players. We're talking about all student athletes, the opportunity and access to to snacks or, or to, you know, to other meals. And, uh, and you know, here at the University of Virginia, our, our student athletes, uh, their plan has been put in place that everyone enjoys that opportunity to take advantage of that. And 
I can't speak to the other coaches, but I can speak to the fact that that because of it, and it goes back to again, we're talking about nutrition and things like that. I mean, we're not having double cheeseburgers or anything like that. I mean, there's you know, there's there's what they put into their body is still smart, and very important, and um, you can ask that question better when Ross gets up because I. He's taken advantage of all the snacks that he's had a chance to uh, to have, you know. But again, it's 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 you know our, our, this university, the athletic department has responded in a way that uh, benefits all student athletes, and we're we're very appreciative of that. Mike, back to the attendance thing. Um, forgive my stupidity. Do you guys have pep rallies every week, or just before the first game? Uh, I'm not sure. Every week. Um, but that's something, if the students are out there and you want to do something like that at a home game, we're willing. I'm willing. Um, so, you know, we are, again, like I said, we, we, we play to make sure that what's seen on the field is a product that people want to come and, and support. And, I, I, again, I appreciate the people that come out. But, um, you know, whatever it takes to galvanize our students, our fan base, or whatever it is, you know, Love to get involved with it because I, I appreciate those who come to the game, and and you know hopefully we make it exciting enough that people will keep coming back and and they'll bring someone else with them and they'll bring someone else and and that's how it grows. So well, hopefully this this week against Louisville is uh, is another game that people will come and support the players. I know that in in some schools a coach can like send a mass voicemail to every student you know at the same time. Do you do those kinds of things here? I will be doing things like that, and um, trust me, I, I love our student body here. And um, you know, we uh, there are things that we will come up with, coming directly from me as a as a as an outreach and as a an opportunity to to embrace our students. Because like I said, the first game they were phenomenal when they were there. Um, the second game uh, against Richmond, they were there, but maybe not as much as many before. But I tell you what. That's been a surprise, and they've come out, and hopefully they'll come out again this uh, for our third home game. You were buying chicken wings last Monday night for them at the coach's show. Uh, Got to make sure it's not a violation there, Jim. You, you said you will be doing stuff. You haven't yeah. done those voicemails yet? Uh, I've done a few, a few things. We have a great uh, department of student workers that work for us that uh, get the word out. We use you know, the social media as well. And, um, but there are some things that we can do that I can do. I can do better. <laughs> 